earth to heaven. Let Jesus lead all the way. Hallelujah, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come this morning just to say thank you for another day, Lord, another day that we can come into your presence, that we can go into your word so that we can hear what you have in store for us in our lives, so Lord, as we continue to walk after you and pattern ourselves after you, we thank you, oh God, for how you have changed our hearts and you're changing our minds as we get into your word Lord. your word said that be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of the mind so Lord, we thank you for the changing and the renewing of the mind as we come Lord, it's coming to hear a word Lord. a word that's going to change and real life so as we walk down this path Lord, that you have already died and paid the price for that we walk Victory in every area of our life. Father God, we thank you. We love you, Lord. For the ones that are coming out, that are here, we thank you for them right now. Lord, you, Lord. we continue to bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And those that are out uh, listening in, that the word will go forth. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to lift up uh, Pastor David as he's getting ready to break the bread of life. Lord, that our hearts will be open and like seeds, Lord, that your seed will come in and yes, we will uh, go in good ground and bring yes. forth good fruit. Yes. Hallelujah. And the fruit is your character. Yes. And Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Praise you. We give your name honor. Hallelujah. Lord, we just ask that you be glorified yes, in this place. Yes. Thank you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, blessing to be together once again. Uh, thank for everyone who is with us at this time. This is a uh, <clears throat> some trying times we are in, and um, it is uh, imperative that we seek the Lord. You know, um, everything, um, everything that we uh, do, and everything that we will be, has to be um, tied to Him. The uh, the current circumstances that we have. In our country, didn't happen overnight. You know, um, a lot of times we want to see it fixed overnight, but it didn't happen overnight. It won't be fixed overnight. But God knows how to fix anything. He's a very patient God. Oh, sir. Yes, sir. You know, we always say that whenever we're together, um, we're always learning God's character learning how to apply the scripture to our life and how all of that applies to the church. And so um, even in this time of crisis, we learn in God's character. Amen. The man of God just said that in his prayer, that the fruit that should come forth should reflect God's character. Amen. So the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, meekness goodness, self-control. All these things come from the Lord. And this is, these are examples of his character. And so um, as we look here, um, beginning here in Matthew chapter 5, again at uh, the emphasis that God has given us for these last few weeks, 
beginning of the year, I came speaking about being the light of the world. And truthfully, that is the mandate he's given us for this year. But as God has been opening up our understanding, we're able also to talk about being the salt of the earth. We couldn't talk about being the salt of the earth when we didn't understand what that meant. We could mention it, but it had no real meaning to us until he revealed to us what it means to be salt. And so we, we were thankful that he gave us understanding uh, about being light. Um, as a matter of fact, in John, I mean, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 12, 17 uh, we see something matter of fact even through 18 it says uh, Matthew 4 and this is just something God is showing me or even right as we're speaking Matthew 4 12 says now when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody he withdrew into Galilee and leaving Nazareth, he came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light. And those who were sitting in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light dawn. And it says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Brother Marcus, Mr. Marcus, he remembers that three or four years ago, all we were talking about was kingdom. And we thought we had understanding to preach the kingdom or were we coming up short <laughs> but God graced us because we began to pursue the kingdom because he said if you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness all things will be added so in us seeking the kingdom God brought us unto where we are now with understanding of discipleship Understanding what it means to be a kingdom citizen. Understanding what it means to be the light of the world. Amen. It says that these people, Jesus came to them after John was put in custody. And it says when they received him, they received the fulfillment of a prophecy. That the people who were sitting in great darkness now receive a great light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He says this, he said, and John 12, I am the light of the world. He also says of us here in Matthew chapter 5 that we are what? The light of the world. He speaks of us in terms of who we are to be or what we are to be, not in terms of what we are to do but what we are to be. So this issue of being salt, it shouldn't be strange. It should be fundamental because Christianity is about being and not doing. Yeah. Now, does that mean we don't do? Well, around here, we know that ain't true. <laughs> we busy folk around here. I had some laid out in here this morning. They was in laid out. We'll just few out. <laughs> because we do we do a great work by the grace of God but not in the doing it's in the being and so he said that Jesus came to them in this instance we don't see him, what he does this is the time we only saw what Jesus did he healed he fed he walked, he talked, he talked 
So most people think of ministry and what they do. You know, I'm teaching the word. I'm, I'm in the word. I'm teaching the word. But they don't reflect upon what they be. And so while they're teaching the word, they're being unrighteous. Mm -hmm. So from the pulpit, folk getting molested. From the pulpit, folk getting armed. Well, not armed, they got no gun. But again, raw from the pulpit. Because I can do without being, is the thought. But God speaks in another wise that when Jesus came, he came being. But they that sat in darkness now saw a great light. And it said, and then after that, he began to preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. After he first came to them as a light. Anybody with me? Now, in chapter 5, right after that, though, in verse 18, let me just stay in verse chapter 4 for a minute. I wasn't intending to go here, but God is leading us. It says that he chose his first disciples. If you got a caption over yours, I'm reading from the New American Standard. It says the first disciples. It says, now, as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother cast in a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you. Hmm? I will make you. <laughs> follow me, and I will make you. And he's still saying today to men who fishing in the wrong hole, <laughs> they got their net on the wrong side of the boat. He said, follow me, get what? I will make you. It don't matter what you are, or what you were, or what you thought, or what people think you are. He said, don't worry, because I'm going to what? Make you. Make you. <laughs> so the issue then becomes being what he makes you to be. Yeah. <clears throat> when he chose his first disciples, he didn't choose them because of what they were doing. He chose them because of what he could make them to be. Christianity is supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be those who are allowing him to make us to be something. But what happens in today's modern Christianity, we come to Jesus as we are. We ask him to measure us and size us up so he can fit something on us that fits us just the way we are. Amen? Because we know we got something we can what? Do. But it ain't supposed to be like that. He said, follow me and I will what? Make you. If we allow him to make us, then he will clothe us and furnish us with the things for what we should do because of who we become. Can you see that? So his first disciples, he said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. He says, immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going off from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father mending their nets and he called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Now, discipleship requires us to leave and cleave. It's like marriage. You gotta leave what you're doing. Be with him. Mark chapter 3, he says he chose for himself 12. Now, after he chose thee, he chose many others. But in Mark chapter 3, it says he would went up on the mount, on the mountainside, like he liked to do. And he looked at all the disciples and he chose out of them 12. And these happened to be a part of that. So that they might what? Do something, right? So they might do something, right? Huh? Say it again, disciples. <laughs> so that they might be with him. Huh? Do we need to look at that? Go to Mark chapter 3. See, y'all y'all, y'all like me looking at me like y'all don't believe me. 
Y'all supposed to know this by heart. That, that they might be with him. See, the, the purpose of, of, of Christianity or purpose of, of Jesus calling you start with verse 13. The purpose of him calling you is not first for you to do something. It's first that you might be with him. Be that you might be. Everybody say be. Be. Don't say it like it. Be. 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 <laughs> be. I like that. Be. I just said Nigeria. Be. <laughs> Amen. And he went up on the mountain. Mark three thirteen. And he went up on the mountain and summoned those whom he himself wanted. I like the way the New American Standard said that. He went up on the mountain and summoned those whom he himself wanted. And they came to him and he appointed 12 so that they would what? Be with him. And that he could Thank the King James saying that he might send them out to preach. He might. But he he definitely, huh? Most, most definitely wanted them to do what? He be with him. See, when you say it like that, be with him, then it have more meaning because it's not just saying be with him, it's saying be with him. In other words, how he is, that's how you will be. Amen? Be with me. Come be with me. Huh? Come be with me. And so they were about being. And his being was always like being like his father, right? So if they're going to be with him, they also going to be being shaped to be like what? His, his father. father. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good of them that love God. And are called according to his purpose for those he foreknew, he predestined them that they might be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. Amen. Everybody say be. be. Amen. So, so the issue is to be. Now, let's look at one more thing since we, we follow this path. These things should connect for you. Um, I think it's John 8. While we're here, we look at John 8, 12. Come on, tell me what John 8, 12 says. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Amen. Amen. It is, it is. It is imperative that you understand who he is because he's going to ask you to be with him and be like him. Amen? You might say be. Yeah. Amen. Now, what I really wanted to go to, though, was, well, let's just finish that. It says, then Jesus spoke again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. See, I could just lose my whole point and just stay right there. <laughs> I can lose my whole point right there because that is where the issue lies for the church, that he really wants us to walk in the light of light. He is the light of light. He is light. That is light. We used to have light that was darkness. Huh? He said, you once were darkness. He didn't say once you once were walking in darkness, or you once were living in darkness, or once you had you know, the power was turned off. No. He said, you, you once were darkness. You don't say that right here, but he says it in scripture. We need to understand that this issue is a fundamental issue. Understanding the character 
and the will of God. That he would be unto us light. And that we might also be light. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Let's, let's skip down. I need my King James. See where I'm at. He says, I'll start with verse uh, 21. John 8. Still in John 8. He says in John 8, 21, he says, Then he said again to them, I go away, you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where I'm going, you cannot come. So the Jews were saying, surely he will not kill himself, will he? Since he says, where I'm going, you cannot come. And he, and he was saying to them, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he. You will die in your sin. So they were saying to him, "Who are you?" Jesus said to them, "What have I, be, what have I been saying to you from the beginning? I have many things to speak and judge concerning you, but He who sent me is true, and the things which I heard from Him, these I speak to the world." They did not realize that He had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said. When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and I do nothing of my own initiative. But I speak these things as the Father taught me, and He who sent me is with me, and He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to Him. As He spoke these things, many came to believe in Him. Now, this issue that we see. is the issue of what we are to be and what we are to become and where we will where it will take us see Jesus is not just speaking to us about things in this world he's speaking to us also of a world to come he's speaking to us of access to the father but He's saying that only those who be with me can be with him. It has to do with being. See, people think that they can skip over Jesus, but the Bible says that, that none can come to the Father except by him. So I can't think that I'm going to make it in if I don't choose to be with him now. I can't show up there and say, Jesus, you remember me? <laughs> what are you going to say? Depart Depart from me. <laughs> work, of, work of iniquity. I never knew you. I'm going to call him a work of iniquity because they're working against him. They're working against him. Now, these things are a mystery. But they're not supposed to be a mystery to us. Yeah. All right, one more thing. John 14. Verse 8. We'll just skip to that. I don't know. About, maybe I should skip. John 14. Oh, I'm getting off. I find my way back. John 14. 
want because see you need to hear all of this in content see it's hard for me to pick out stuff now and just give you little pieces because you need context for your life jesus spoke in context he said this he said different things in this in this in this, well, or it seemed that he said different things but he really was saying the same thing just in different settings he never was saying anything different and so what he said in one place coincides with what he says in another place and so here we see him saying similarly watch this do not let your heart be troubled believe in god believe also in me you got them up there I'm like King James. That's fine. Go ahead and read it. You got to pull that man down. Start working. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. That where I am, I want you to stop. Just hold on. <laughs> what did, look what it said. That where I am, you may also what? You may also what? What's wrong with y'all Bible? Your Bible don't say it? <laughs> <laughs> you just saying that you just can't hear. All right. Let me hear you. That where I am, you, you may also what? Be. He read it. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know whether thy goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Oh, oh, I am. See, when he said I am, that means I be. Huh? I got, I got, I got a couple school teachers in here, and they're right. That word I am, that's the word, word to be. When he said I am, he said I. Be. So for us, how do we say him, and we are not, or we don't be, or I am not. See, see, they taught me don't don't say that you you ain't Jesus. You're not Jesus, but Jesus said I am. Hmm? That's what his father said then. And I'm his son. Mm -hmm. You know what I say? Yeah. I am. I, huh? yeah. I be. See, the whole point of Christianity is so that you can what? Be. So you can also say, I am. Come on now. Mom. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father, but if ye had known me, you should know my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet, hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Stop. He said, have I what? Been with you. What does that word been come from? Be. Huh? Be. Have I not been with you? That means we have been. And together we be together all the time. We say that in the hood. We say we be all the time, man. Why is it that you say you don't know my father when I am? Huh? I am. So the issue is what to be. Even Shakespeare knew that. Or not to be. Huh? <laughs> Shakespeare said to be or not to be. That is the question. That is the question. Huh? <laughs> it's still the question. Okay? Yes, it is. To be. Or not. Or not to be. So, so now watch this. What I wanted you to see was the progression of their travels with Jesus. Is that in Mark 3, he chose them to what? 
be with him. And in, in here in John 14, he says unto them, in John 14, 8, he says, have I not been with you? Then how is it that you haven't seen the Father? The purpose of me being with you is so that you might know the Father. All right. What is the purpose then of discipleship? I know the somebody who have been with Jesus will be with you and you will be with them and it may not look like you being made into anything but he said he promised he said I will what? make you huh? he said I will make you so while you're being with them, that person who God puts their hand on your life, while you're being with them, he's making you. Amen? Fishing. No, they were fishing sometimes. Sometimes they was out laughing, sitting on, sitting on to the well, getting warm. Feeding 5,000 people with two fish and five bottles of loaf. It didn't look like he was making them. Huh? It, it was a classroom. Everywhere was the classroom. And it was important that where was the classroom because everywhere is where it's important to be like him. Yes. See, if we only learn to be like him in here, Useless. Useless. The moment you walk out that door right there. Brutally. Huh? Uh, he said, bide in the mind. You'll pr pr produce much fruit. Be with me. I in you. You in me. You will bear much fruit. Otherwise, a stick, a branch broken off is fruitless. Well, see, this whole issue is about being. About being. Now, have I not been with you all this time? And you still don't understand. Matthew 5. We saw in Mark 3 pattern that Jesus liked to take his disciples up high. When he chose the 12, it said that he went on the mountain. Called all his disciples. He said he called unto him the ones he wanted. Some of the uh, young boys were singing songs to the rapper said, Back then, y'all didn't want me. <laughs> I probably don't need to quote that because I don't know who said it. <laughs> but, but, but Jesus wants me. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm getting at. They didn't want me, but Jesus wanted me. He called me unto him so that I might what? Be with yeah. him. Amen. Me. Now watch this, what he does here in Matthew 5. I'm going to read for myself for the conservation of time. It says, when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Now, so Jesus again went up. They were used to that. His disciples understand that you're going to have to climb to be with him. Huh? All right. You ain't going to be wallowing around on the ground. If I had my, my, my picture, my, my favorite, one of my favorite pictures in there, you see that one, that, that, that one, that, that right there, friend. That butterfly. If you understand, this ain't the one I like. The one I like is the one my one of my one of my children drew. This is Genesis. This will do for now because it's right here. This right here represents the life of those who are not disciples. This life here, you crawling around on the ground. Huh? You live in the low life. Hmm? 
keeping it on the low. <laughs> Some people like keeping it on the low. I just like keeping it on the low, right? On the top, see? <laughs> you go now. But, but, you go. But in order to be with him, some change must take place. You see this thing, it crawled around on the ground. But now we suspended in midair. Change. Somebody say change. Change. If you're going to be with him, you're going to have to make a change. It's going to look a little weird. You're going to feel a little weird. You don't look nothing like that, dude. But the change that you want is going to be a change that's going to cause you to look nothing like you are anyway. One of the issues is that people want to be with Jesus, but they still want to crawl around on the ground. Still want to hang with the low life. Now, Jesus said he was with publicans and sinners and all of that. But he wasn't with them crawling around on the ground. He was calling them well. Up high to him. Up on the mountain. Hello, somebody. So if you're going to be with Jesus, he's going to call you up from where you are. He ain't coming to hang around down in low life places. And then after some change take place, a metamorphosis take place. You become something beautiful. You become made to, 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 to hang out up high. Amen. Hey, somebody. I'm made to hang out up high, y'all. <laughs> it may seem like I'm in Lodi Bar down here in Wiley, but really I'm hanging out up high. It was in Lodi Bar or Wiley or Inslee, whichever one you want to call it, and when God took me across the water. Amen. All right. I said with kings. Huh? I ain't talking about figuratively. I'm talking about real kings. I got pictures with kings. Amen. Amen. It's in Lodi Bar when the people of the city came looking for me and said, hey, we hear about what you're doing. How can you help this city? Huh? It's, it was when I brought myself low, he raised me up high. Huh? Somebody say to be. To be. So if I will be about being, God will be about raising. Huh? Amen. He'll be about raising. He'll, He'll raise you. you up. He'll exalt you. He will exalt you. He said, you humble yourself. Yes, that's right. So his disciples already understood this. So when he went up on the mountain, they didn't think it was too much. He knew that's where he exalted folk at. When you climb, climb up. So they climbed up. The other folks said, he'll come down. <laughs> he'll come down. Whatever go up, come down. We're going to wait on him down here. But the disciples climbed well up. Yeah. And so after that, the first thing he said to them is in line with what we just were saying. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Blessed are those who are humble. The true definition of what he says here has to do with knowing that you need God. You don't remember nothing else I say today. Remember this, that Jesus believed that the first priority of a believer is that you must know your need for God. You can't be confused about that. Poor in spirit means that you're bankrupt within your own self. And without him, you ain't going to make it. Huh? I told my son that one day, we was having a long conversation. I was just talking, going on and on and on about how I wasn't nothing. He said, Dad, you all right with that? <laughs> I said, son, it took me a while to get here, but I'm just fine with that. See, when you're young, you think you can change the world. You're so smart. You got so much intelligence. You get older, you realize you done messed up, and then messed up some old folks. You begin to have a little bit of temperance. You begin to think to yourself, is there any help? <laughs> Start looking to the left and right. See, is the help coming? And the Lord will show up for you. But he don't come to help you make a bigger mess. You ever have some people that come and help you, but when they come, you're going to do it their way. Now, we're going to do this. We're going to take all this down. We're going to build it all back up. You didn't want to do that. You just want to count and fix it. 
You might let them go on. <laughs> let me get somebody else in here. But when the Lord comes, you're going to bring that change. Ain't nothing going to look the same when you get through. Everything going to look different. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to be a metamorphosis. It's going to be a change. Praise the Lord. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they should be comforted. Blessed, the New American Standard said, are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. I like the word meek. Meek has a unique meaning. Gentle just means you're just kind of gentle. Like some baby shampoo. <laughs> I ain't no baby shampoo. <laughs> but I am meek, though. Moses slew a man. But the Bible says he was the meekest man on the face of the earth. So, so, so gentle don't really do it. Meek. It means I have strength. But it looks like weakness. Because <laughs> my strength lies in another. Amen? My strength is made. It's his strength. His strength. Is made perfect in my weakness. That me, Amen. So folks think I'm a pushover. <coughs> Strength under control. Under who control? Under his control. <laughs> you let it go. You let it go. You let it slide. Because God is able to deal with it and he'll save them too. See, in God's economy, he don't want to waste no life. He chose Moses because he knew that when he got mad at them folk, and he knew he would, then Moses would cry and say, Lord, don't kill him. Huh? Am I right about it? Many times Moses had to go say, Lord, wait, wait, wait. If you kill him, you brought him out here and kill him, then the folk going to say, what kind of God is that? <laughs> he needed, he, he wanted, I ain't going to say he needed, because he could have found somebody else. But he wanted Moses because he knew there was something in him that would allow his strength to show forth through Moses, his strength, rather than the people looking at Moses and trying to make Moses a king. They knew that Moses' strength was in the Lord. Could hardly talk. Huh? He couldn't. He couldn't produce nothing until he prayed. So the people knew that the strength came from the Lord. These first three beatitudes, and we didn't even talk about the fact that these things are the beatitudes. We know that, but let's now looking at it from what we've seen today, the beatitudes have a deeper meaning because the whole issue is about us what? Being. So the beatitudes then are the formula for us when somebody cut open a Christian. That's what that's what configuration gonna come out. It cuts you open up. The configuration, when it comes out, it's gonna look like four in spirit. It's gonna look like somebody that more. It's gonna look like somebody that's meek. It's gonna look like somebody that's merciful. Hmm? It's gonna look like somebody who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And it's gonna puzzle the world because the things of God are foolishness to the world. Right now, there are people that's trying to compete with me, not understanding that I'm not doing anything. I don't have an agenda. I don't have a, you know, somebody told me, well, you'll come through. I said, you don't even have a clue what my dream is. <laughs> my dream is just to be like him. I don't have no dream about being no, no big corporation. I've been there. Built on sand and then built high rises and did everything else. And it came to nothing. I don't have no big ideas, not no ideas and big dreams about all of that. I just want to be available for him. Now, so so then all the folk compete when they see me doing something. They say, oh, Charles Davis over there doing this here. Man, you think it means something, something to it? I don't know. Let's see. So now everybody start doing. Now, that's not everybody. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that there are those who want to compete. You know, there are other people here in God, too. 
and just doing what God was telling them. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have, I don't hold a market on that. But what I am saying is this, that I'm not in competition with it because I just hung in thirst for righteousness. I just want to be satisfied for one. When I hunger, when I was hungry and thirsting for the things of this world, but now that I'm in here, I'm satisfied. Now they told me she was through. I love her. But the point is, I don't know. I'm going to go all that. That's all we're going to do. But if I get that new cosmetic, you understand? I don't need to say that much. I don't need that. I'm getting new cars. Hey man, we got new cars before I get new I feel it some kind of way. Right. All I'm saying is he has satisfied me. I'm really not trying to compete, even in that. Even when I just said somebody felt competition right there. What that preacher trying to say? I got a new car. I, I have utmost respect for your new car. I, I, I like to ride in some of them. Jump in there and ride with you. You go on, you pay your note, and do what you do. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Me, my car I paid for. It don't make no harm no more. I crank it up, it's just smooth, smooth, go right on. <laughs> the roof back, they even got a sunroof. And it don't leak, I let the roof back. <laughs> Every now and again, I let the roof back, mother. Way home from church. Sick <laughs> 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 and out. And man, I'll be just happy. It wasn't a day and time. All I could see was the problems. This thing here got a little mix. It got this. That grown. Got a scratch. Need new coffee. I, all I used to see was the problem with everything. Now all I see is the best. Now, now watch this. That's the DNA of a believer. You be content with what, what he whatever he give you. Because you in him and he's in you. And what you be has nothing to do with what you do or what you have. Will God bless you to have more. I I I uh came in contact with a brother this week. I don't know a lot about the brother, but he impressed me because we were talking and I tell him what we do. And Brother just listened to me and he heard me. Most people don't hear you when you're talking to them. They didn't know what they want and know what they, they are. <clears throat> but their brother heard me and he said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm sending a text to my secretary. She's going to write you a check. Put some money into what y'all doing over there. And don't even worry about what I call asking you about. Don't even worry about it. And now, if you get a chance to help he folks go ahead, but it's not to worry about. And I'm saying that to say that I have a utmost respect for him because most folks got too many things they got to go through before God can tell them to do something. They got they got they got to immature themselves too too much before they can do something to help somebody. And I'm saying all that to you because this issue is about. Verse 13. I don't know my time is about to feel it. Ticked away. It says, You are the salt of the earth, but that the salt has become tasty. Now, that means that your life no longer tastes like being poor in spirit. Your life no longer tastes like person that more. Your life no longer tastes like the meat of meat. Your life no longer tastes like a person that hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Your life no longer tastes like a person who gives mercy. Your life no longer tastes like a person that's pure in heart. Your life no longer tastes like a person that's all about making peace. Your 
life no longer tastes like those who can be persecuted for righteousness sake. You don't have that 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 good burn burn. You know you know when you grill something that has smoky flavor, your life's going to have a smoky flavor because you've been on the altar. Amen. You've been persecuted. They done raked you over the coals. You got that that savor, huh? That aroma. But they call it that aroma. Huh? He told me one time when I was up there, he said, You have a little aroma, <laughs> but it's inside. I was very I was very thrilled to hear him say I had a little aroma though. And I came home and I said, I ain't holding back no more. I gotta get this out. Whatever it's in, it gotta come out. I don't it's no good for me to have an aroma that's inside. That's the case. It ain't getting. It ain't making its way to God. Your life should have an aroma. People ought to be attracted to your life because they see the aroma of God putting you through the fire. Your life with salt. Every sacrifice, he said, will be seasoned with salt. That salt and that sacrifice, we put it on. Turn that aroma start comes out. Oh, my, what's going on? Who grilling? <laughs> in, my, in, my, in my hood, they say, you got me on? <laughs> real, real, real. You got me on there? <laughs> Yeah, I go. I go back in the house and find something to put on that grill now. <laughs> they want to they want to know if I got something on there for them. Huh? And when I come to your life, preacher, I, I'm asking, you, you got me on there? Huh? Because I'm coming with some mess. Huh? I got some problems. I got some issues. And when I come into your life, I'm going to bring you something. And if you're not on that altar of, with, with a life that can be persecuted for righteousness sake, then I will never taste the salt of the earth. See that salt gonna bring purity to my life. It's gonna bring. It's gonna push back the corruption in my life. So you've been salted and roasted, and you you straight. But me, I'm perishing. Huh? I'm like a T-bone steak left out on the porch. Good piece of meat. This time, right? Come on now. Huh? They need that salt, but if you salt it down, it'll keep. Huh? If you salt it down, it'll stop right. So when I come to you, Sister Murti, I'm looking for that salt in you. But he said, "This is what the salt required. The salt required that you might have to be persecuted." For righteousness sake. And be all right. Says. And lastly. Rejoice. Be glad. For your reward is, is. In heaven is great. For the same way they persecuted the prophets. Who were before you. That same salt that was in Esther. The same salt that was in Mordecai. The same salt that was in. The Hebrew boys. The same salt. They all went through and were persecuted because of this salt. And that salt did something to the land. They put them boys in that fiery furnace. Huh. Babylon got turned on his head. Huh? All that talk about idol worship and all that went away. And they said, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I got glorified when salt got, got put in the fire. But if you, you don't have that salt, when they put you in the fire, you're just going to be a burning, stinking mess. You're going to perish. But you are the salt. Huh? You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by me. So, here we are. God has given us understanding today of what it means to be. Why these are the be attitudes? Because you, this is what you have to be. So that he can use you in a situation. 
circumstance of life. Not so that you can be on TV in the spotlight. But if you found on TV, if you found spotlight, what is going to be coming for? That's all. Corruption can't corrupt salt. Salt stops corruption. Huh? The only way he can put you on TV and, and you be of still of use to the kingdom is you gotta have what? Hmm? Matter of fact, you gotta be salt. <laughs> you gotta be salt. Amen. Questions coming. You know, everybody saying, well, a little risky, you know. It wasn't risky for us. He said, why we were called? It, it'd be different if he hadn't told us before this happened that it was going to happen. We just didn't know what it was going to look like. It'd be different if he hadn't said, well, I'm preparing you for such a time as this. Now, what sense you're making me preparing us for such a time as this? He says that in Matthew 24, 45, who is that wise and faithful servant who I shall find that will feed my people in the time of their need? Huh? If he hadn't said that, it'd be different. But if he said that and I'm walking by faith, then I have to, by faith, be in place to feed the people that he was talking about. And so in this time, because we had this salt this salt have caused other people to have salt in them. And now the church has been brought up during a time when the church was supposed to decline. All the church was closed. The church came outside the doors and said, we're going to feed the people. And so people all over this city are looking at the church differently. Because I had salt in me. But folks thought I was crazy. A lot of folks bagged off. Some folks bagged off. They, they stayed bagged off. I, I regret I told one person, I said, what kind of Christianity is that? I regret I said that in a way, but I really meant it because I'm saying if you can help us help others, even if you're scared, don't we help us help others? Because that's is what he is working. It ain't when it's convenient. He said, when you be persecuted for what? Doing what's right. We're doing what's right. Now, we go to the football game. And there's no pandemic. There's a flu outbreak. Pneumonia outbreak. Huh? Everybody's still going to the football game. It ain't going to stop nobody from going to football game. That's some folks caught the pneumonia when they went. I'm not right about this. But when it comes to doing something for God, you can only do it when you have this salt in you. Now, I'm not saying everybody needs to be here. I had to, to qualify everybody. You have to know what God is telling you now. And the person that, I was, that I'm referring to, I was asking them to do something that didn't require them to be out here. Okay? 
and they still couldn't see it. But I'm saying all this to say, it's the salt in you that makes you. He said, I will make you. Let me show you how. Well, the veil brings us months every on the other day, it seems like every day, but it don't be the one twice a week. But when it, once you bring it, it be so much, but it be just like, boy, you don't know, live for that. Yeah. And she been doing it consistently for over a month, I know. Yeah. But the thing about it is, it's her way. It means a lot. After we volunteer, volunteer, everybody look forward to that. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody can't do everything. If we understand that, then we'll let him show us how we can. But but we gotta first want to be sorry. Thank you, Patricia. Anybody else? Comment, questions? All right, no other questions or comments. We're going to pray our way out of here. Oh, come on, Josh, pray that. Example for us on how to live. Lord, um, we're practically all of the And um, Lord, He represents how we are supposed to live. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to become like Him. Let our um, speech, um, our thoughts, Actions. Let everything, Father, um, change because of the time and the sin. Again. Yes. Lord, I pray that those that we are around will notice something different about us. Amen. That um, we will also represent the kingdom of God well. And that people will understand. <coughs> What is uh, God's perfect will for our lives? Uh, Yvonne, I'm sure we've had bad examples of what it's like to be a child of God. Lord, I pray that with us and with others, that you will allow us, Lord, to represent who is a child of God, who is a son uh, of joint air Christ. And I thank you, Father, for what I said today. Pray, Lord, to help us to be, to be like Jesus. To Jesus name. Amen. 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 Amen.